That's one of the problems, is that when you veto this, it's amendment and all. And so we have to be very careful about that. We, we want a win-win, as Mr. Lawson has said on numerous occasions. We want you to have the options of both. The only problem with the legislation in its current form is that if it is left as it is, it ends any notion of commercial. What we're asking is that we don't do that amendment so that we have the options for both. We have never minded, and it didn't come up late in the game, we have always promoted that there be a lock-in on the commercial. The whole plan is about commercial. Spark is about commercial. I just want you to think about this. In all these years... You mentioned it ends any hope of uh, uh, commercial you better let it no, I no, I mean that if you if you knock out the residential, if you say that cannot can be no residential, we we end that project being a mixed use project. And I believe, looking at history, you are hurting your chances of ever having commercial. And and here's here's why. If you look at these last 30 years, it hasn't happened. We keep hearing things about drainage and all the issues. I can address each of them. Drainage is not exacerbated by having a park residential. There are engineers in the room. I would ask any engineer who disagrees with what I'm about to say to come forward. Impermeable surface area, concrete, causes more outfall problems into the stormwater system, which adds to drainage problems. Having the residences with toilets and sinks and having green space, which is required under SPARC, allows permeation, it allows water to go through into other areas, sewer and natural uh, drainage. It doesn't create concrete where you have water hitting, the outfall goes into the system. We talk about crime, this is a gated community with restrictions. It's not just 1.25 million divided by 56 units as was suggested. This is a, a project that leverages another $8 million. We want to put a substation, we've committed to it, the sheriff has committed with us, across the street, the first joint RPSO COA substation to serve rivermen in the whole area. We are thinking and listening to you. We're thinking about what you asked us to do. Make it safe. It's a gated community. You've heard it's low income. Not true. It's moderate income. We are thinking about what you're telling us. We're listening carefully. What we're asking is that we not throw the baby in the bathwater out. If you allow this to go forward, we have all the time in the world to work together on it. There's no reason to separate the good and the angels on this, ladies and gentlemen. We can all be for the same thing and not foreclose opportunities. This administration, I want you to think about it. We have committed $38 million to District 3. This administration, in writing, has committed that. 38 million, we keep being told, I heard someone comment earlier, the administration's been telling us, not this administration, I've been mayor for two years. I don't know what's been said for 20 years. Lou, I don't know. I'm sure a lot has been said, and I'm sorry if things and promises didn't come forward. I appreciate what you're doing for your neighborhood and fighting hard. So. Here's what the deal is. We've committed 38 million in writing. That's more that's been committed to any district in the city's history. That's true. In the city's history, anytime, anywhere to one district. That's the commitment of this administration here. I've been in two years. This is a first catalytic project. I have it broken trust with you. Let us move forward and show you what we can do. And then judge us if it's not working. Let us show you what we can do to bring commercial. The commitment has always been for commercial. There's not a drainage issue. Any spark project has to have an independent owner's rep engineer certified. We want that to be Frank Willis, if that contract goes through, who has to certify that that project will not add negative capacity issues on drainage. It has to happen first. We talk about traffic congestion. Ironically, traffic is what commercial wants, ladies and gentlemen. You all know that. They want there to be traffic. What Mr. Goins is experiencing with young folks on the weekends, that's a separate problem. As Mr. Lauberdain would say, that's a programming and having other things to do issue for the city. That's about recreation and other commitments. That's not about not having traffic move, you, you would want traffic in a commercial car. In fact, that's what they look at is a traffic count. There'd be no reason to stop it. The congestion issues at Willow Glen and Third Street are not related to this. 
They're related to other problems that we need to address, and we're working through those problems. But the issue of this project is really about leaving opportunities open to you. We have been working with Michael, and Michael, I appreciate that, Mr. Caffrey. We worked with him uh, in the last two weeks and talking more about it. I think you heard Michael say, there are things to do. There's dialogue to be had. This isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to commit $38 million to this district, ladies and gentlemen. We think it's worthy, and it can come back and do something great for the city. I'm asking you to give us a little deference and show what we can do to move forward with this project, what we can do to commit to the commercial aspect. And there's things we can do. But if you do the legislation as it is, it ends any housing component, which could, in fact, end some of what commercial folks would want with moderate income, knowing that that moderate income is going to serve that retail center, that grocery store every day. Not low income, moderate. We hear from these professionals and they tell us that. So if you leave that option open, we can work through you, the council and us, establishing that we will have a certain percentage that's guaranteed commercial. I don't, whatever you ask for, we'll do. We, we don't mind that at all. Spark is about commercial. It's not about residential. Spark itself is about commercial development. It's a $96 million plan with $40 million in District 3. $40 million in District 3. That's the commitment. For, we, we put it in writing. A small portion of that goes to this. This is mostly leverage money. If you turn away this NSP money, which is neighborhood stabilization funds, that's what it's for. It's designed to make the changes that you want here. If you turn it away, they'll take it back. They will take it back. And you remember what we had happen on the South Circle when we turned away that money? What happened? Nothing. Nothing, and did we, did we get back in line to get that again? Nope. We're still fighting to get back in line on it. I'm asking you to slow this down. Let's have the dialogue you want. If you say we haven't had enough, we'll have as much as you want. That's my commitment to you. But don't kill the project by not allowing this to move forward. When I was asked to veto it, I have to consider two things. One, if I have enough votes to, o to not be overridden, a mayor may choose to do that, right? Because he or she may think in his or her heart it's the right thing to do. But if another person is added to it and it looks like the actual legislative will has shifted, then I really am compelled at that point. So this isn't about a fight. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight with the council. I don't want to fight with the citizens. I want us to move forward together. I'm asking everybody, I implore the body, think about this. We can have a win-win, as Myron says. We can all win on this issue big, win big time. Think about it. Thank you. Thank you, John. You certainly can out to Mr. Banks and a few other ones uh, do get recognized. Uh, Mr. Banks has been patiently waiting, and as he approached the podium, Mr. Silver was next, too. Harry, you want to go next? 